All right, now that David's taken you through the history of hyperbolic planes and some properties of them, I want to kind of show you using a manipulative here that I crocheted out of yarn. This is um, just one of many types of hyperbolic planes that you can crochet. I'm going to start off with showing you how I did it because I think through creating it, I learned a lot about hyperbolic planes and how they um, how their properties are formed. So this is not a crochet class. I'm not going to take you through on how to crochet. Um, what I'm showing you here is just how I got started. Now, if you're interested in this, if you know how to crochet or if you want to pick it up, it's not too hard to pick up. You can YouTube a few videos on how to crochet the stitches I'm telling you about. This is just a single chain stitch, and I'm only going to crochet this out about 10 stitches. Now, I did more on my hyperbolic plane, but right here I'm just showing you how to get started with it. You have about 10 stitches here, and on top of this, we're going to do what's called a half double. That's what a half double looks like. On the bottom of this, you're looking at the single stitches down here in the bottom. And to create a hyperbolic plane, normally you would do one stitch on top of one stitch. But here, as I just showed you, I did one stitch on top of one, one stitch on top of one, and then this stitch right here, I squeezed two stitches into. And then as I flip it over to do the next row, I'm going to put one stitch in on top of that guy right there, one stitch on top of that stitch, and then this one right here, I'm going to squeeze two stitches into it. So every third stitch, I'm putting two stitches into it. To kind of see this better, I've drawn a picture here. And so suppose I've got these this single row of stitches here, and I'm adding to it on the top. I'm going to do one stitch on top of one stitch, one top on top of one, and then I'm going to squeeze in two right there. Then I'll do one, one, and let's pretend like the bottom actually had six stitches, and then I'm going to squeeze in two right there. Coming back, I'm going to do the same thing. Every third stitch, I'm going to squeeze in two stitches. So I got one, one, two. Squeeze in two there. One, one, and then squeeze in two. Once again, one, one, and then going to the next row, I'll squeeze in two on top of that guy. One, one, squeeze in two. So normally you would just do, if you're crocheting like a blanket, you'd do one stitch on top of one stitch. But for a hyperbolic plane, every third one here, I'm squeezing in two. Now you can squeeze in more if you want. You can do every other stitch squeeze in two, um, and that would create different hyperbolic planes. But here I chose every third stitch squeeze in two. So looking at this, our bottom row has six stitches in it. But as I go up one, two, three, four rows, I end up with actually about 14 stitches on the top. So my number of stitches grow from 6 to 14, and I've only moved up four rows. Usually this should stay six stitches, six stitches, all the way up through all four, but I'm squeezing in more material than I should be allowed in those six stitches. So looking at my hyperbolic plane that I created here, I started not with a chain of about 10, but I actually started with about 50 stitches here in a single chain. And then from that, I did the method of one, every third stitch, adding two stitches to it. So right here, I've got about one, two, three, four, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, about 11 rows. So starting with 50. And look at the outside edge here, how much space that outside edge takes up. So you know, I started with about 50 chain lengths, and then as I thumb through this, you can see that it's way more than 50 stitches. I didn't want to bother with counting them. I guess we could calculate them, but there's a lot of distance on this outside edge that we could track out just by starting from something as small as 50 stitches. So you might want to start smaller if you create your own because this thing will quickly expand on you. So once again, you can see that's about the length I started with. And then as I added 11 rows, it became what you're seeing here. Now our next topic is, what is a straight line on a hyperbolic plane? As you can see, it's very ruffled. Um, and we're going to go back to a concept we talked about in planar geometry to look at what is straight. One of the ways we can describe something being a straight line is if we were to take that plane and fold it, we get a straight line. And it doesn't matter if we fold it in half like this, 
or if we just do any type of fold, if we do a fold and make a crease, we produce a straight line. Do it one more time here. Fresh, there you go. That's a straight line. We're going to do that same concept <clears throat> in a hyperbolic plane. So I'm going to take this guy and I can fold it any way I want. I'm going to fold it right here. And this would produce a straight line along that crease. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this crease and I'm actually going to stitch some blue yarn through it so you can see it a little bit better. So here it is. I've stitched a blue line through that crease and now you can see what a straight line would look like on a hyperbolic plane. From this we're going to apply to it, uh, we're going to actually look at lines that do not intersect and we're going to focus on Euclid's fifth postulate saying that there is a line that will come through here that will not intersect the blue line we produced. So I'll go ahead and do one blue line through that and then we'll show you how two lines can go through the same point and not intersect that line. So here I produced my second line and you can see that if I fold it there's my line it's going right along that crease in the hyperbolic plane and notice how it curves away from the original line that smaller line we did down there. So it's curving away from it and the smaller line is actually curving away from the, large, the larger line I've just produced as well. So the two will never intersect because they're bending away from each other. So that one curves up and then the other one curves downward. Now what I want to do is produce another line that will not intersect our original line. And I'm going to make it go somewhere through... Um, point up there on that. So let me fold a line, fold it again, and produce another line. So now we have two lines going through it. Here's our first line that we did that was not intersecting the original. And here's our second line. Notice I can fold it this way and I've produced another line. Now these two lines share a common point. They intersect right there, but yet neither one will ever intersect our original line that we produced. So unlike planar geometry, we can have more than one line that goes through a point that does not intersect a, an original line right here. Now, I could produce more than just these two lines that intersect at that one point right there. I could produce a line that goes through like this. I could produce one that goes through, let's see if we can make it different than the second line I made. It could go through like this. It goes through that point still, but yet does not intersect there. So I'm not going to stitch all those because then it gets kind of crowded, but this is a nice way to show how um, the parallel postulate would apply to a hyperbolic plane. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe you go out and try to just pick up a little bit of crochet. Um, they're definitely fun to make. They take a little while. That last line I was telling you about, the first line I did was 50 stitches. That last blue line I produced so you can kind of see the boundaries of the physical hyperbolic plane that I made. Um, you know, it goes on forever. What I made, So it didn't look like a big white mess. I put a blue line on the outside. Um, but that last blue line took about two hours to crochet. I'm not the fastest guy to crochet in the world, but... Um, so you might want to start off smaller and then go from there. Thank you and have a good day.